What's up guys? It's your boy Keon Mr. Rockoff Johnson here with another video. And in case you can't tell from the title of the video, this video is the video so many people have asked me to do and I don't know why I never did it. So so now I'm finally gonna give it to you. This is how you talk like a street racer and how you essentially negotiate street racing. Um quick disclaimer. I don't I have never street raced a day in my life, but I do know my way around the whole lingo and language and everything. Um because as you know, all my racing that I do was on the track. Obviously. Yeah. So, anyway, um but yeah, so I I'm, I'm just throwing that out there. So take it like that. Alright, so help me out in this video is gonna be my boy Bishop. That's 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 some boy, that's 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 little bro. Even though he's bigger than me, which I don't understand, but you know. Whatever. Um guy in the background. Yep, whatever. Uh his his Instagram should be popping up somewhere right here so you can you can go follow him. But yeah, he's gonna be helping me out with this video. So uh let's just get to the fucking video. Now the first thing we're gonna talk about is Buying the merch, y'all already know, man. LTMR Racewear, link is in the description. We got the hoodies, and you know, with the with the you got gapped on the back, cause you know that's 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 what we do. We gapping people around here. But um, all right. So now that I did that, now the second thing we're gonna talk about, or the first official thing, I don't know, I don't know, man. Fucking not supposed to. But yeah, I don't know what happened right there. Um, wigged out. I don't know. I saw a raccoon or something. But anyway, um. First thing we're going to talk about is, well, are the two different styles of street racing. So you have your dig racing, and then you have your roll racing. Dig racing, that's when you start at a standstill, or stop, or however you want to say it. It's just two people lining up, and you're just sitting there, and then one person's going to stage. I'll get to what staging means later on in the video. But one, per but one person's going to stage, and the other person's going to stage, and then there's either a flag or a light and then both cars take off and get down the straight as fast as they can and of course whoever wins wins um then you have roll races roll races have started to become more common me personally i prefer dig racing that is if i was street racing because we all know that i don't actually street race i'm just saying that if i if i did street race that's what i would that's what i would prefer because that's what i gotta do but yeah so i mean i i don't prefer roll racing but yeah, uh, base what roll racing is, you're starting off with the cars already moving, and there's all kinds of different rolls. Some people do 20 rolls, 30 rolls, 40 rolls, 50 rolls. If your car is just this fucking fast, some people do 60 and 70 rolls. I, you know, whatever. But, um, but usually that's, that's what's going on. It's usually people on the highway or on some, on, on some, straightaway street and what I mean by 20 30 40 roll and all that kind of shit that's the mile per hour you're starting at so you're there and then pretty much when both of you are at 20 miles an hour someone honks it off usually three times both cars take off and it's either whoever gets gapped first or sometimes it's like two something like there's been some races that i filmed before where it's been a 60 to a 140 roll where whoever gets the 140 first you know they're the winner so um yeah that's the two differences between the racing all right so now we're going to start talking about the sorry i had to look at my phone <laughs> the different types of um races you can do or the different ways you can negotiate big racing um Dig racing is usually the thing that people will argue about. There's not usually not a lot of arguing when there's someone doing a roll race because not a lot of people take roll races seriously. But dig racing, that, that gets pretty serious. Um, that's when you're going to want to negotiate space. Space is given to somebody when they feel like to make the race even, they need to get set out a certain distance. Usually it's by car lengths. So let's say... I want to race Bishop. Bishop, bring your ass over here! So let's say I want to race 
Bishop here. Now, Bishop ha has a, a Nissan Altima, and I have a turbocharged FRS here. And if I say, yo, you're trying to race, he may be down to race, but he's like, I cannot beat him. Heads up. Heads up mean exactly what it sounds like. Both of you are starting at the, at the same point. But he may say, I can't beat you. Heads up. So he may ask, give me two. Give me three. Give him two or three. That means carling. So someone's going to walk going to walk his car out two or three cars and then from there we're going to get to flagging the flagging the race and everything and the race getting off um me personally i don't like giving people space i'm just a heads up kind of guy that is if i was street racing because i don't street race i do everything at the track now another form of dig well another little variation of dig racing is when you give someone the move or the wiggle or the hit a lot of people have different ways of naming what that is but basically both cars may start you know at the same point but instead of someone flagging a race or using a light or something like that one car goes and then the other car goes now even though to some people that sounds like that's not a huge difference that is an extreme difference because you don't really, you being a person that's giving somebody to move, you don't really have time to stage a car. You don't know when they're going to go because they can just jump at any time. And, you know, you're, you're just going to be like, oh, what the fuck? Okay, all right, so now I got to go. Like, it just, it messes with your reaction time. But I guess that's just their way of making it even. I'm not really a fan of that either. Like I said, I'm a heads up kind of guy. You know, both of us going at the same time, but teach his own that's just what some people like right so then next when and this is all of course still in the category of dig racing you have flagging and going off the light sorry that was my phone but you have flagging and going off the light flagging is what you think you would see um that's when someone puts their arms up throws them down and when they throw them down both cars take off and the light That was the <laughs> come here, come here and demonstrate the light. Y'all gotta see this shit. Y'all gotta see. <laughs> he almost fell into my car and I would have fucked him up, but <laughs> but yeah. So that's essentially what a light is. I don't know about the running back. I I think that's just for TV shows and shit, and that's just weird to me. But yeah, the light to me, the light is better because it really makes the race even. Why do I say that? If someone jumps the light, you can tell. If someone um, was sleeping on the light, you can tell. The light is absolute. Point blank period. The light is absolute. Flagging, some people may be able to tell when someone's going to drop their arm so they'll jump. But it's hard to tell that someone jumps off of a flag because the person's arms are going down. And some people think... When a person's arms go up, they take off and then it makes the other person take off and all that kind of shit. Now, when something like that happens, maybe in negotiation, you may say, well, a chase is a race. What that means is, let's say, and this goes with even a light tube, a light gets banged off or, you know, arms get dropped. Let's say the person jumps. Usually that person will lose. Most people negotiate that if a, if a car jumps the line, they lose. What happens with the chase is a race? By that point, they declare it a real race because the other car is now chasing the car that jumped. So the fact that the car jumped is no longer in the equation. It does not matter. Chase is a race. Again, that's if you negotiate it that way. Some people don't negotiate chase is a race, but you know, oh well, whatever. Um. So yeah, by that point, since it's a real race, whoever gets to the finish line gets to the finish line. And there's no ifs, ands, or buts, or buts about it. Chase is a race. Now the last thing, um, before we start getting into the whole like negotiating races kind of shit, is um, lane choice. Now why is lane choice so big? Lane choice is big because no matter where you are, whatever spot, track, street whatever there is always a good lane and a bad lane 
usually called the dirty or clean lane. Um, everyone, of course, wants the clean lane because if you get the dirty lane, your tires could spin, and spinning ain't winning. You don't want your tires to spin. And that's, that's, that's pretty much it with that. So one thing that I did say that I said I was going to come back to, I'm now getting to now. What is staging? Staging is when you pull up to the line and you get your car ready. It's just, it's just a short way of saying you get your car ready to race. Now, some cars, they have what's called, two, usually in, in its um, stick shift cars, they have what's called two-step, where it's a, it's a, sorry, cars are like driving by in the background, where it's launch control, so that they can launch the car off the line as hard and as fast as they can. Um, usually that's in racing videos when you hear it, it goes, wah, bah, 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 or something like that. Um, auto cars, there's two ways to stage an auto car. Um, usually if a car has a trans brake, it's exactly what it sounds like. It, it, yeah, it's, it's exactly what it sounds like. You, it's self-explanatory what a trans brake is. <laughs> but um, that's usually when someone has a trans brake and it kind of sounds like a two-step, but it's, it's not necessarily two-step, but it still gives you a way to launch your car hard as you can and as fast as you can. Well, to get your car as fast as it can off the line. The other way to stage a car, well, to stage an auto car is putting your foot on the brake and, well, really this is almost kind of any car. Putting your foot on the brake and putting on the gas and just getting the revs up as high as you can. Um, that's usually what most people do when they stage their car. Now, another thing with staging is trying to figure out who's going to stage first and second. Why is that important? Cars get hot, especially like supercharged cars and turbocharged cars. They, they'll get hot and they'll succumb to heat soak. Heat soak makes the car run slow because you need that cold air and everything like that. Um, why do you want to stay first? Why do you want to stay second? To have an advantage over the person, honestly. Um, so that's pretty much that whole thing with staging first and staging second. All right. So, now that we've gone through, you know, staging first, staging second, lane choice, um, rolls, digs, uh, whether we're going off the light or the flag and all that kind of stuff, we're going to start getting, in, getting deeper into, you know, negotiating street racing. Um, next, tires. Tires are a huge thing. Some people are going to be like, oh, you know, well, I need space because... I'm on street tire and you're on tire. I know a lot of people are probably like, what's the difference between being street tire, being on street tire and being on tire? On tire, tires are just on the car, period, right? It's a slang term for drag radios. Usually when someone says they're on tire, they're on some type of a slick or drag radio. To show you a good example of that. So as you, in case you're new to my channel, this is my turbocharged. Uh, FRS that I do race race at the track and everything like that but right here I've got my regular street tire on the front uh, just some good years and everything like that but on the rear I have my slicks now why is that so important slicks give you a lot more traction versus the street tire I can tell you this right now when I'm on street tire I spin my ass off I can't beat I probably won't even be able to beat a Prius because I spin so much um, what causes tires to spin when some people some people can hook on street tires some people can't um, it comes down to whatever tire you're using and it comes down to how much power your car has this car just has too much power for my street tire um, my slicks work perfectly fine so usually when I go out racing at the track I let, I, you know, I'm like, hey, I'm on street tire, you know, heads up and all that kind of stuff. Another thing that goes into effect with street racing, with the negotiation and everything, is what kind of transmission you have. Whether it's a stick car or an auto car. Stick, of course, meaning manual. Auto meaning automatic. Now, there's going to be controversy over this because people believe, what, believe, you know, what they want and everything like that. Um... 
I'm just going to go ahead and say what most people are usually scared of when it comes to racing. And if someone is having a serious street race, usually if someone has an automatic, they already deem that car like, hmm, that's, oh shit, that's an automatic. You get what I'm saying? And that's mostly because automatics, they shift precisely and perfectly every single time. Every single time it's going to shift precisely because it's literally embedded in a computer to do that. Stick cars and manual cars, you know, you can short shift, you can fuck up and not get the car into the next gear, you can bounce off the rev limiter, like a bunch of stuff can happen that's driver error and don't get me wrong, there are some stick drivers out there that can drive the piss out of their car and they make auto cars look stupid. I will completely admit that. So that's that's another thing that goes into effect. So let's say I'm over here with Bishop, and you don't need to get in the frame. And Bishop is like, I'll run you. Uh, I want space though because you're on tire and you're an auto car. I'm a stick car. That may give me means to tell him, okay, you know, I'll give you some space or I'll give you the move or something like that. Maybe, like I said, I ain't going to do it. <laughs> but yeah. Now for this part, I'm honestly going to be giving myself away a little bit. But uh, another thing to watch out for are like people who try to hustle. Because, it, I mean, street racing used to just be like, you know, it used to be even. Like, nobody was trying to do any gimme races. Gimme races are exactly what they sound like. They set people up to race these cars or these people want to race these cars and they know the car is not in their league but yet they want to race them and it's like why you already know you're going to beat them like that's a gimme race but people want to do nothing but gimme races now and um people just want they just want to hustle people another thing to look out for when it comes to negotiated street racing is seeing what kind of power out power adders they have um some people ask to pop hoods me personally i don't pop my hood but it's all about knowing what to look for. So, like I said, this car is turbocharged. Um, I will completely admit this. Because I race at the track and everything like that, um, most, most turbo cars, they have boost gauges here or like over there. This is in the car now. Or like over there. Me, can you turn the light on for me, B? Yeah. Me, for those that haven't seen the video, my boost gauge is actually in that vent. Now, why is that? That's an event for when I'm at the track. And for people that don't watch my channel, because there are a lot of people out there that, you know, race at the track that don't watch my channel. For people that don't watch my channel, you're just going to think it's a maybe a bolt-on FRS with, you know, slicks on it. You're just going to look at me and laugh like what most people do until I pull up next to them and they're like, oh, shit, this car is actually kind of fast. Um, like I said, I don't think this car isn't the fastest, but you know it. It still is pretty quick. So people don't, and so people don't know that I'm boosted. That's why my gauge is hidden there. Uh, another spot. Another thing about my car. My intercooler, which is front mount, is painted black. So since it's painted black, you can't see it. Except if you look in the corner right there, and it's just my my uh blow-off valve just peeking there it's all about stuff like that or if you know how to look for slicks because there are some cars they could like let's say I had both my white wheels on the car but it's just my back wheels with slicks it's all about looking at the tires seeing what they are oh hmm those are good years oh wait wait a second what those are slicks it's all about knowing what to look for because a lot of cars can be very, very, very secretive with their stuff. So, um, yeah, that's that's another thing, too, because you you don't want to get caught up because I've that's happened to me before. You don't want to get caught up because you don't want to get caught up in a race when the person is just going to completely like demolish you. Because 
now you're gonna be giving up your money. All because you weren't vigilant or anything like that. Um, another huge thing that comes with negotiating street racing is whether or not you're on pump gas or E. Um, e being E85, pump gas being your regular octane, your 87, your 89, your 91, your 93, you know, whatever. Now you're probably thinking, wait, E85 is pump gas, you get it from a pump. Not in street racing. Since E85 is such like a, it's a poor man's race field, that's, that's, that's what it is. We don't really consider it pump gas. If someone says I have a pump gas car, this is a pump gas car. This is on 93 octane, okay? If I go to race somebody and they're on E85, if someone has the exact same setup that my car is, exact same setup, but they're on E85, they may have anywhere from, depending on the tune and all that kind of shit, but they may have anywhere from like 50 to 100 more horsepower than me. Um, even though that sounds crazy, it's been proven that on E85, just from you switching fuel like that at a gas station, you'll have that much boost. So, and street race is kind of considered race fuel, essentially. Um, or if someone actually does come out on race fuel, that's going to give them a huge advantage. So that's another thing, too, when it comes to negotiating street racing and whether or not you're going to actually race somebody or not. So that's pretty much going to conclude it for this video. Um, I hope that, hope that helps some of you guys out when you're out there in Mexico action. It's not, I don't condone street racing, but you're going to do whatever the fuck you want. So while you do whatever it is you want, you might as well know what you're talking about. Because I can't tell you how slightly annoying it is when I go out to races and two people go to race and... And, you know, the flagger may say, all right, who's staging first, who's staging second? And the people go, what's what's that? Do you know what that is? I don't, I don't know what that is. Like, and it's just like, come on, man. What are you doing? So, um, so yeah. As always, guys, you know, get the merch. Merch link in the description. Go check out my boy Instagram and yeah, everything yeah. like that. Future Sighted. <laughs> there we go. Future Sighted. It's popping up down there somewhere. Um, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Hit the bell icon. There's not going to be a lot of racing right now because the racing season is pretty much over for us on the East Coast. But if you guys have seen my past videos, I mean, y'all already know what's going to happen in a couple of months. Well, it's not even a couple of months. A month. So, um, uh, <laughs> yeah, you know, you stay tuned for that. But, uh, yeah, as always, guys, you stay classy, stay positive, and have a good day. What is a car enthusiast? An individual that loves anything to do with cars and its counterparts. And one who can talk for hours about cars and not get tired of it. What's up, man? What's going on? Is this yours? Yeah, it's mine. It's a nice little car you got here. Thanks. What you got? I'm running that BMW over there. Oh, it's a nice BMW. I mean, you know, you you run it? Uh, I run it sometimes, you know, here and there. Yeah, you run yours? Yeah, 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 yeah. You run it, you running tonight? I don't know, man. There's a lot of people out here. I just came out to look. Why? What you, what you running? What you got in there? I mean, not for real. It's, it's just bolt on. I said, it's just, it's just really light. You know? I mean, I know your BMW got a lot more power, but I mean, I, I just want to see what I do against it, honestly. I mean, I don't know. You look like you might be trying to hide something in there. <laughs> nah, I ain't. power you got? I mean, look. You can look at it. Ain't nothing. Ain't nothing done, man. I race it. I race this. You race it? Yeah. Um. From a dig? Uh, I'd rather do a road race. Rolls? I don't like road races. Rolls for bakery, man. <laughs> I mean, come on, we could we could do it from a dig. Like, you've got more power than me. I'm I'm just like that. That's all, man. I mean, what are you on? You do a dig. Are you on street time? I'm on street. Street tire? Okay. I mean, I'm on tire, but that that's not going to really make a difference, honestly, since you... I mean, look look at what you got. That's a It's a 328. You're, I'm pretty sure you're, you're, you'll be fine. <laughs> um, I mean, 
would you give me some space? How much space are you looking to get? You get two cars? I give you one car. One car? How about a car and a move? I can do that. You do that? Yeah. And, um, going off a flag? I'd rather do the light. Light? Okay. Okay. Well, what, what the fuck am I talking about? That's right. Um, so you you giving me the move, so ain't we don't need a yeah. That's true. Okay. All right. So we don't even need the fuck need the light or anything, cause you giving me one in the move. Yeah. Cool. Um, how much you want the pot to be? I mean, I wasn't really coming out here to look to be racing. We can go for like forty. Forty. Yeah. All right. Cool. And that's how you do it. In all honesty, of course, Bishop, this, in case some of you were cringing who actually know how to street race and everything, Bishop, before this video and before hearing me explain this, he knew nothing about street racing. No, well, I didn't know nothing. He didn't know nothing. He knew some stuff because he's, he's come out and watched street racing with me before because all we do is watch street racing. <laughs> but um, but he, he didn't know it as much as like what I've said today. Um, in all honesty, like I said, you got to know what to look for when you're negotiating. The main thing, let me take this camera off real quick. The main thing wrong that Bishop did was a simple fact that when I said, number one, it's an FRS that I said is Bolton that wants to race a BMW. Look under the hood. And it's on tire? Well, I wouldn't pop hood. I, I never pop hood. The first thing that he should have did was really got a good look at the car. He said just, you know, did his rounds around it real quick. Okay, I already see he's on tire. You know, I've got the window down, so no peek in real quick. And he would also see that I'm halfway gutted, by which my car actually is halfway gutted. And the moment I said I was bolt on, what he should have did was, you know, look down to see if he could see anything. Now, it's dark, so you can't really see my intercooler down there, which is why it's painted black and everything. So my... He still wouldn't have seen anything, honestly. But, um, yeah.